So here's our project for Why So Serious. Um, I did a section that's about a minute and a half long, and here's how it sounds. So that's the track right there. You can hear that there's a lot of dissonance going on. Um, you know, it's got that stereo ping pong and that soft and loud dynamics to make it really, uh, you know, like really create a feeling of unease about this song. And I think that's exactly what uh, Zimmer meant to have with uh, this Joker track. So let's start with the simple bass of it. And these are the viola staccato, right, that rhythm that's ongoing, and here's how that sounds. And it's got a very interesting rhythm about it, accents on every third, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So that's a really interesting rhythm as well. And um, let's have a listen to what we've done on the basic. I'll turn off all the effects. And, um, okay, this viola staccato is basically under orchestral strings. Where is it? Viola staccato, uh, which is here. That's right. And um, now it sounds just like that without any effects. It's a bit repetitive, doesn't have that much uh, sort of interesting texture to it. I put an enveloper so that it doesn't uh, have so much attack. And it brings out the rhythm of that one, two, three, one, two, three even more. And then I wanted some high end into it. So I put a channel EQ with, um, yeah, two high humps, which is one at about 10,000 and a half hertz. And uh, one's about five. 1100 hertz and uh, it gives it a bit more high end you can hear the accents and the air a little bit about that and then I compressed that just to make the levels a bit more uh, manageable and uh, basically I used a default one by turning it to VCA and all these are my different settings in there and now you can hear that you can see the gain reduction here now for one of the most important things is the rotor and that is basically a spinning sort of uh, it's mainly used for the EVB which is the organ and um, yeah it's a cabinet that sort of spins with speakers and the mics and you can hear the sort of swirly sound that it gives. So it sort of emulates that um, swirly sound that, you know, that stereo ping pong thing that uh, Zimmer has done. It gives you a bit of a dissonance and makes you feel a little bit disoriented. So yeah, that's how it sounds. Now, the, f the thing is, I wanted to give it even more of that feeling of sort of dissonance about it. 
so I added a blues organ. I'm going to take this out. Uh, set to blues solo. And for the roto cabinet, I matched the same settings of the roto cabinet to the roto cabinet in the violas. And this one's built into the instrument, so you just click over to roto cabinet. You don't have to add it in the effects. And um, you get this. So it doesn't sound particularly interesting. These are longer notes, just like that. And these are where the accents are. Now, the thing is, um, if we put a tremolo on it, and these are the settings for the tremolo. I made it a pretty deep tremolo, but I changed the settings of the smoothing a little bit. Um, and yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the rate as well, just to give it that one over eight feeling. Here's how it sounds. Now that's trippy, right? It's got that sort of like weird disorienting feeling about it. And I ended an enveloper just to take away the, um, the attack as well, just slow it down. So here's how that sounds. Now it really throws you off and you add it with the strings as a background. really gives off that vibe, which I really, really like. Now, uh, the next thing that comes in, this thing just repeats itself and goes on and on. Uh, the next thing is this bass that comes in. And what I used uh, to match it was this under bass, electric bass, picked rock bass. And I used the bass amp. In this case, I used the edgy amp. And um, these are the settings. And from there, I used a compressor, which was uh, bass light under guitars. And I just tweaked it a little bit here and there. You can check this out. And then, of course, I sent it to a reverb. And the reverb, in this case, is a space designer with one of my favorites, large spaces, warm halls. Just nice, uh, warm, sort of not too harsh space that's not too big as well because this song isn't particularly big. Here's how it sounds. It's got a gritty vibe about it because if you take everything out, um, you still get that, the dark vibe. And we added a bit more distortion with the bass amp. Yeah, a bit more evil and the compressor just keeps the sustain going. And the thing is, I could have stopped there, but I felt that it needed a bit more body. So underneath that, we use a Yamaha Grand Piano, a factory acoustic pianos, Yamaha Grand Piano, and sent the reverb quite generously as well. And you can see it's fairly low in volume, but it's got that, you know, that gives it that dark feeling about it when mixed with the bass. Bit of the hammer feeling as well, which goes very well with the whole track. And that's the opening bit. Now let's go to the big bit. And it's very interesting because this song goes from quiet to loud really, really sort of suddenly, and loud to quiet the same as well. And it's to sort of like throw you off a little bit. You're not sure when it's coming in, it just comes in. And um, yeah, let's listen to that bit again. Now you got that, um, that seventh thing going. And that's from a cello, right? So we got a cello legato under orchestral strings, cello legato. And the thing is, I like to send it through an amp to get that kind of sound, right? And um, it's under distorted all the way up because it really does sound like something turned all the way up. And of course, we have a generous around of reverb as well. So you get that kind of uh, distorted kind of sound. But to give it a bit more body as well, I use a 
full brass staccato, an orchestral brass full brass staccato, send it through a similar kind of amp under distorted bassless boutique crunch. And here's how that sounds. So it's got a bit of the honk about it, and when you put them together, this really big siren kind of distorted siren kind of sound, which I think is really cool. Now, here's for the bass, right? I went to the ES2 and had a bass called, and a synth bass called Distorted Break, which I really like. And I just put it to the rhythm like this. I'm just checking. I think I mucked around with the attack a bit. I turned it up so I didn't want to click at the start. Apart from that, it's about the same. So just check it out in the project linked below. Now, here's where the real bass happens. <laughs> and it's this ES2 again. And it's this bass called Real Fat. Now, Real Fat without the ARP. I'll turn that off. It just sounds like this. Really fat, kind of sawy kind of bass. But with the ARP, and you're just playing one single note, you get this. Quite neat. So that, with the bass together, it goes like that. So you get that weight, and this one really carries the rhythm, the distorted break, right? And the rest are more, okay, this one here is the one of my favorites, the European full kit for the kind of big acoustic sounds, world European full kit to get a big drum sound. I mix quite a number of them from this, like toms, to a little high end a little bit. So here's how it sounds by itself. Pretty big with the bass. Here's how they sound. That's the rhythm. And here you need some distortion on top of it. So what I picked was a uh, EXS 24 instrument under guitars, electric guitars, Sunburst power chords, which has this nice thing about it. Uh, with the arc, that's why it's going. And, um, and there's an amp as well, and it's under distorted modern classic. Now, um, here's how it sounds. Just a single long sustained note. Yep, uh, different parts of the scale play different kinds of rhythms. This is the one we went for. And um, underneath that, there's a sunburst electric just to give a bit even more distortion. And that's under electric guitar, sunburst electric. It's playing long sustained notes as well. And I send it to an amp. And this time is American Stack Distort. It's good to mix amps so that you get different tones and fill up different spaces in the whole, um, you know, sort of frequency spectrum so that you get this nice big sound. And here's how this one sounds. They were fifth apart, so you get that power chord going with it. So the two guitars sound like that. And I felt like I needed more percussion, even bigger percussion, right? So I go to one of my favorites, which is Textures FX, Trailer FX1. And it gives you the kind of big sounds like this. Just to enhance the triple hit. And uh, there's another trailer FX1 here. This one has been sent to an amp. And it's a, oh, it's a default amp. And these are the settings for that. And yeah, just to give it a bit of, you know, gritty sound. But I also wanted a cleaner sound and this trailer FX1 doesn't have anything on it. And it sounds like this. It sounds a little bit artificial by itself, but when you put them together, they always sound great. And there's one more thing here, 
which is uh, more of the high end if I'm not mistaken. Let's listen to it. Yeah, these are like snares and a bit of a tom. And the orchestral percussion, orchestral kit. And then you can see there's a bit of flaming going on here. I didn't sort of like do any fancy flaming. I just pushed this by one uh, sort of SMT uh, nudge. And uh, yeah, here's how they sound together. With the percussions, uh, I'm going to take European full kit. Yeah. And just to add a super duper low end, I like the basses staccato under orchestral strings, basses staccato, and some really, really low end. Yep. And to make it even bigger, I added a trailer FX2. Uh, also, just accents. everything together it's really really big you need to control it a little bit in your mix um, and yeah that's just a repeated pattern of the same bit and then we go back to the second section which is same stuff here but with the added sounds of this new section here and i want to highlight something is that these things come in and out they get automated in and out so um yeah i added a tremolo violin playing a very similar pattern actually you can see by the names i just copied the viola section and um yeah so here's the sounds And this is exactly the same track, Violins 1 Tremolo, uh, with the whole envelope, but the same effects as the viola you see up here. And uh, they're just in different ranges. So this one comes in and out as well. So it's kind of the high octave. If you play the strings together, So that's how you get sort of like the evolving textures, you know. You can put similar things on top of each other and sort of uh, automate them in and out to just uh, get different sort of evolving textures. And then in this section, you get the African kit. And this is a uh, nice for that stick percussion, world African African kit. And you can see the, it's just this stick percussion here. Sounds like that. Yep, with a bit of reverb. And uh, I use the up to play it as well. So the up is set to this one, two, three, four pattern instead of live. I go sort of like this organic kind of pattern. So you get something like this. And it just goes on throughout. Now there's the buzzy picking and this is sort of like, I'll just give you how it sounds first. It's a bit like a distorted guitar, it comes in about here, all these sort of have a little automation upon their entry. And um, so how this one works is, it's a sculpture, I'll take out the amp and the tremolo, it sounds like this. I just picked a pluck instrument and the buzzy picking. And the thing is, I mucked around with the... Uh, yeah, the decay and the sustain, I just put it to full because I didn't want it to sort of die off. It's supposed to sort of go on. And I added an amp, which is a boutique retro distort. I really like this one. It sounds like that. Nice little buzz there. And um, I added a tremolo. And I use a dip, deep tremolo. Change the smoothing, the rate, and uh, the phase. And here's how it sounds. It's nice to hear it evolve as well because it's a fairly organic sound from sculpture. And uh, yeah, 
that's how it goes. Now, this section here has got some crazy sort of dissonance going on. And courtesy of Alchemy. And the soundscapes, all ambient distorted. I was just looking through and I found Aquatic Dreamscape. And I turned it to dirty. And um, you get this very nice low sort of... Uh, I adjusted the attack as well, a bit of the sustain. Um, you get this kind of sounds. So it's really sort of like painful dissonance type stuff, but it's beautiful at the same time. And I just played these long notes that didn't really match the scale. So there's a bit of more dissonance in it, like this. So it gets bigger and bigger and more dissonant as it goes along. And then it just cuts itself off right here. Now, the thing that goes with it and makes it even more disturbing and bigger is another alchemy patch. Uh, also under soundscapes, under distorted, you get bolt metal pipe and I turned it to dirty chaotic. And you get this really like disturbing sound as well. I'm going to play for you. And the more sounds that you have, the more disturbing they are. Um, just a point to note, I wanted it to really cut off. So I took out any kind of uh, reverb effects like this acoustic reverb. I just took it out. So I turned it from on to off. Um, yeah, just so that it cuts off right at the end. And then you get just this. And that leads to the really big end section, which goes like this. And you can notice that on top of this section, there's this like sort of wailing guitar thing that's... Aquatic Dreamscape, you just kind of hold one single note the whole way through. And um, yeah, all these are made up of the same things that you see here. I didn't use everything because it didn't have that big sort of a alarm horn type sound. But you do have your rhythms going on top here. Same as the start. So you have this combination. And of course this one, because it's big, you want that low end as well. And also with the African sort of wood ticking. So all the rhythmic aspects are still in, like these, all still in, um, and including the violins as well. And, oh, this one's viola, sorry. And yeah, and uh, in terms of this particular viola, it's a, a more sort of, everything's very similar except for the channel EQ, just very mid-rangey, boxy. And um, that's it. So, and there's this little um, shadow sweep here, which is an ES2 um, sound. Actually picked it up from uh, the main settings here under logic, surround, surround textures, shadow sweep. And uh, it's just this little sweep in between the notes. Sent it to a reverb as well. So here's how it sounds with everything. So that's the thing. Um, something to pay attention to is that for long sort of drawn out sections that repeat themselves, you can have sort of uh, ev evolution in textures to make it a bit more interesting like these over here and to bring in new th elements as well. Um, so that it doesn't get too repetitive. 
um, that's the key to this long sort of uh, repeating mottos, uh, uh, repeating patterns. So yeah, and one thing I want to bring up is for the mastering this time, I added a bit of uh, around 220 hertz and some high end shine, because the difference that you hear without that is just uh, yeah something you want to pay attention to. I'm just take it out. And with it, just more high end. I use a limiter as I always do. In this case, I really like Logic's new uh, LUFS meter. I'm going to show you how it works. Um, and that's why, okay, so we're going to start it. So the integrated value is about negative 15, right? Um, I kind of yeah like that range, negative 13, negative 15, um, for YouTube especially. So I turn the gain down to three, but you can do it according to taste, right? So that's it for the mastering.